I want to turn uh, the attention to the panel to maybe the two most important questions, two most frequent questions I get about testing in, in PV. Um, and one is, is the JAK2 allelic burden at the time of diagnosis important? And the second, what about these reports of splice site variants? Are those artifacts or are those clinically important? So I, I'm, going to, I'm going to turn it back to Serge to, to start on that. So, so Serge, the, the JAK2 allele burden, I mean, how about if it was really low? Could this just be chip? Well, the testing is usually done in this uh, clinical setting where you are suspicious of a polycythemia vera. We are not really randomly testing people to see whether they have a, a low level of the JAK2 mutation, which can then be a chip, right? Uh, but we are really testing uh, in the setting of suspicion of a polycythemia vera where there would be high normal or above normal red blood cell count. You would also look, as we said before, for high white cells, high platelets, iron deficiency, erythropoietin level. And in that setting, you would also test for the JAK2 mutation. So the presence of mutations on its own, it's not a diagnostic for any of the NPN because they may have a chip. But if you have the mutation in the context of all these other tests, and uh, Dr. Uh, Shamo has that uh, uh, articulated very well, uh, borderline cases or mass PV, you would do this testing and uh, account for all these factors to make sure that you don't miss PV because therapeutic approach must be different than if there is no PV, right? Phlebotomy is mandatory. Yeah, I, so I agree. But burden, on the other hand, may be important, but we are not routinely do that testing to follow. There is a, a, a good uh, literature on high allele burden being prognostic in terms of progression to myelofibrosis or exposing people to high risk of thrombosis itself. Okay, so, but let me put you on the spot. If the allele burden at the time of diagnosis is, let's say, less than 10% or less than 5%, it, you, could that be consistent with PV? It can be in the context of a hyperproliferative bone marrow, high red blood cell count, low erythropoietin, iron deficiency. That would be, however, unusual because the median allele burden in PV is about 45. Okay. It would be an unusual case. Okay, Ruben, what do we, um, what do, we do with these reports of um, exon um, uh, splice site uh, variants, uh, splice, site, splice site variants where exons are dropped out. Is that just an artifact of the assay or are they clinically important? I don't think we fully know yet. You know, I think as we're continuing to get more and more genetic information, you know, uh, I think it, it is a very rapidly moving target in terms of, you know, what is an activating mutation and, and what really is, is genetic artifact. You know, I do think that the, the, the annotation of our genetic reports is a very active process, you know, that, that is not fully baked, you know, so I'll, I'll clearly try, try to look them up kind of as they arise, uh, as well as whether they have the potential of really kind of altering our, our understanding of what we should be doing for those patients. Uh, but I do think in terms of our decision support as hematologists, uh, moving forward, trying to keep track of all of these things is really quite difficult because there's such a river of, uh, of uh, information as it relates to different types of mutations, allelic burden, and, and other sorts of, uh, of pieces. Uh, so I think as we get supported over time, uh, that clearly will be a, an important part. You know, as we're trying to digest, you know, what is the mutual impact of half a dozen or a dozen mutations, some of which are in non-traditional uh, splice sites, uh, it becomes more and more difficult for us to interpret that information. Serge, did yeah, you want to add? I fully agree with Rubens. This is the area of research, but specifically on the JAK2 gene variant. You know, what, what is done in a community setting is you have a hotspot testing. You do JAK2 V617F. You don't look for the whole gene. Only if you have negative result, then you do, do the jack 2 x and 12 But in some academic centers, they do actually analyze the whole gene, right? And MIPL can be analyzed the whole gene. And you will then, in some cases, find the variants in addition to the hotspot mutation that you're looking for. And it seems that the presence of variants or other genetic abnormalities within those genes 
make a difference for the outcome for the aggressiveness. But it's completely area of research.